Hi, my name is Dr. Cabrasi, and welcome to my lesson about naming alkanes according to UPAC rules. The naming of alkanes follows a specific hierarchy that leaves no room for ambiguity. The concepts learned in this hierarchy can be applied to the naming of all other molecules, such as alkenes, alkynes, alcohols, alkyl halides, and so on and so forth. If you find it possible to name a molecule with two different names, then you did not follow the hierarchy properly. UPAC rules are made in a way so that every molecule gets one name. Uh, therefore, there's going to be no more room for ambiguity, so please follow the rules properly, and you should always end up with a single name for every molecule you encounter. The way this tutorial is made, it's split into rules, and there's an accompanying worksheet that you should be solving as you're going along. So after you finish every rule, refer to the uh, worksheet and then try to solve some of the questions for that rule so that you learn hands-on as we go along in this tutorial. So what is the first thing you are going to do when you go ahead and start naming a molecule? First of all, I have two different structures here. It's the same molecule drawn in different ways. The first one is the condensed formula. The second one is a bond line formula. And the reason I have both of them is because it depends on where you are going to school. You could be learning either the condensed formula, the bond line formula, or both. Eventually, though, most students will end up using the bond line formula. So the further lessons um, in my program will not include condensed formulas anymore. So to name this alkane, I'm going to count the number of carbon atoms in the chain. So starting from either side, I count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Six carbon atoms, I'm going to have to match that with a prefix that corresponds to the number 6. And that prefix is hex. And since this is an alkane, the ending is A-N-E. I take that ending and I combine it with the prefix hex to get hexane as my molecular name. Therefore, this molecule is hexane. Depending on number of carbon atoms in the chain, you get different prefixes. Therefore, it's, if it's only one carbon, the prefix is meth and the molecule is methane. If it's two carbons, the prefix is eth and the molecule is ethane. Three carbons, prop, propane. Four carbons, but, butane. Five carbons, pent, pentane. Six carbons, hexane as we saw, 7 carbons, hept, heptane, 8 carbons, oct, octane, 9 carbons, non, nonane, 10 carbons, dec, decane. And after that we have undecane, dodecane, tridecane, tetradecane, pentadecane, hexadecane, heptadecane, octadecane, nonadecane, and icosane. And then we can keep going on and on and on. Rule number two, if the alkane is branched, such as the one shown here, which consists of a chain and a substituent attached to that chain, we must first identify the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms. So we have to find a chain that has the most number of carbon atoms in a row. If I look at this continuous chain, it contains five carbon atoms. On the other hand, this continuous chain contains three carbon atoms. The five carbon chain is the longest, and therefore that's my longest continuous chain of carbons. Rule three. Now that the longest chain has been identified, we have to number it in such a way that the carbon attached to the first substituent gets the smallest number. Let's look at how this can be done. If we number it from left to right along the green direction, the substituent is attached to carbon number 2. That number 2 is called the locant. So the locant for the first substituent is number 2. If I look at the blue direction, which is from right to left, the substituent is attached to locant 4. So in the green direction, it's locant 2. In the Yellow, uh, in the blue direction, it's locant 4. Therefore, since 2 is smaller than 4, 
the green direction is the correct direction to number this carbon chain. Rule 4. Now the substituent must be named. This substituent is an alkyl group. An alkyl group is basically an alkane that's missing a hydrogen. And it's attached to another carbon chain through that vacancy by a sigma bond. In this case, the alkyl group contains only one carbon. Based on the prefix table, one carbon is meth. Therefore, this alkyl group is called methyl. The YL ending is coming from the fact that this is an alkyl group. More specifically, this is 2-methyl because it is attached to carbon 2 on the chain. The number 2, the locant, is placed before the methyl and there's a hyphen between the 2 and the methyl. Rule 5. Now the name shall be assembled. To assemble the name, it has to be put together from different fragments to look like what I have here as a template. A number, a name of the alkyl group, and then the ending, which is the parent alkane or the longest chain alkane. The number in this case is 2. That's the locant of the substituent of the methyl group. The alkyl group is methyl, and the alkane is made up of 5 carbons, and therefore it's pentane. This can be thought of as a pentane with a methyl on number 2 carbon. So putting everything together, the name becomes 2-methyl-pentane. Rule 6. If two substituents are present, the chain must first be numbered in a direction to give the lowest number to the carbon bearing the first substituent. Meaning, you can number any chain in two directions. One of the two directions is going to have a lower number for the first of the two substituents. You have to number in that direction that gives you the lower number to the first substituent. If I number in the blue direction, from left to right, the first substituent gets the locant 3. If I number from the right to left direction, which is the red direction, the first substituent gets number 4. Notice that from left to right and from right to left, the first substituents are not the same, but that's irrelevant. All we're looking for is a first point of difference. From the left, the blue direction, the first substituent is number 3. From the right, the first substituent along the red direction is number 4. Since 3 is smaller than 4, the blue direction, which is from left to right, is the correct direction for numbering, and that's the direction that we will use. Rule 7. Consider the molecule that we were just talking about in Rule 6. We numbered it in a direction that gives the carbon bearing the first substituent the smallest number. Now, the substituents must be identified and named. The substituent on carbon 3 is methyl because it has only one carbon. More specifically, it's 3-methyl. The substituent on carbon number 5 is ethyl because it has two carbons and more specifically it's 5-ethyl. To assemble the name, if more than one substituent are present, the substituents have to be listed in alphabetical order. We have ethyl, we have methyl. Ethyl starts with E, E precedes M, therefore 5-ethyl is listed before 3-methyl in the name. And that's how the name becomes 5-ethyl-3-methyl-octane and not 3-methyl-5-ethyl-octane. Okay? So the ethyl comes first because it's first in the alphabet. Number 5 is where ethyl is, therefore it has to come before it. 5-ethyl-3-methyl-octane. Rule 8. In case you're not sure, a comma always separates two numbers. A hyphen always separates a number and a word. Two words are never separated. Rule 9. Consider this molecule. This molecule is numbered from left to right. The reason for this is numbering from the left side gives number 3 to the first substituent, whereas numbering from the right side gives number 4 to the first substituent. And since we number in a direction to give the lowest number to the first substituent, therefore 
numbering from left to right is the correct way. This molecule contains two substituents that are the same. Both of them are methyl groups. The first methyl is at number 3 carbon, so it's 3-methyl. The second methyl is at number 5 carbon, so it's 5-methyl. When two or more substituents are the same, we group them together. The name shall be number, number, prefix, alkyl, alkane. The numbers represent the locants which are grouped together in order from first to last. The prefix is added to the name, indicating how many of the alkyl groups are present. Di for 2, tri for 3, tetra for 4, penta for 5, hexa for 6, etc. The name of the repeating alkyl group is added after the prefix. In this case, it is methyl. And finally, the name of the parent alkane chain is added, in this case, octane. And thus, the name of this molecule is 3,5-dimethyl octane. Rule 10. Consider this molecule. In this case, we have three substituents, two of which are the same. The two substituents that are the same are 3-methyl and 6-methyl. These two substituents shall be grouped together as discussed previously. These two substituents therefore become 3,6-dimethyl. The substituent that is different is 5-ethyl. Now we should assemble the name. 3,6-dimethyl, 5-ethyl, no name or 5-ethyl, 3,6-dimethyl, no name. However, as I said earlier, UPAC rules are made so that there's only one correct name in the end. So which do we choose? The first one or the second one? When multiple substituents are present, they should be listed alphabetically. Even though D in dimethyl comes before E in ethyl, prefixes indicating the frequency of the substituent are not considered when alphabetizing. Therefore, the correct name is 5-ethyl 3,6-dimethyl no name. The ethyl comes before dimethyl because we're considering the methyl and not the di. Rule 11. Consider the following molecule. In this case, numbering the longest chain, either in the red direction or the blue direction, gives the same locant for the first substituent. Both of them are number 2. So which way do we choose? If such a case arises, we move to the next substituent. If the next substituent also gets the same locant from either direction, we move on to the next until the point of first difference is found. In the above molecule, the blue direction gives number 3 to the second substituent, while the red direction gives it number 4. Thus, the blue direction is the correct direction because it gives the first, even though the first substituents have the same number, the second substituent gets the lowest number in the blue direction. Okay? So therefore the name is 235-trimethylhexane and not 245-trimethylhexane as the red direction would give. Rule 12. Consider the following molecule. In this case, numbering the longest chain, either in the red direction or the blue direction, gives the same locant for all the substituents. If such a case arises, we choose the direction that gives the lowest locant to the first substituent in the alphabet. We have ethyl and methyl. Since ethyl precedes methyl alphabetically, the red direction is the correct direction because it gives the lowest number to the ethyl substituent. The name is therefore 3-ethyl-6-methyl-octane. Hint 1. If a situation arises that seems too complex, don't panic. Number the longest chain in both directions such as the blue and the red directions indicated here. Write down the locants you encounter following each direction. If a locant is associated with two substituents, 
write it down twice. The red direction gives the following locants. 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10. The blue direction gives the following locants. 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10. Now compare the locants until you find a first point of difference. The first locant is the same for both. So is the second. So is the third and the fourth, the fifth, until we get to the sixth locant and it's different. The red one is 5 and the blue one is 7. 5 is smaller than 7 and therefore the red direction is the correct direction. Now we name the molecule according to the red direction. The name is thus 223455789101010 undecamethylundecane. The first point of difference will come in handy in many situations in organic chemistry nomenclature, such as assigning priority numbers for EZ and RS stereochemistry and other. Rule 13. In this situation, the alkyl substituent is itself substituted. The alkyl group has to be named according to the rules we have learned thus far. The only difference is that the number one carbon of the longest chain of the alkyl group will always be the carbon directly connected to the chain. From there, find the longest chain. Now find and number the substituents on the alkyl group. The alkyl group is therefore 1-methyl-ethyl. Notice all the YL endings. Now assemble the name of the molecule for open bracket 1-methyl-ethyl-octane. Hint 2. Some substituted alkyl groups have common names. For example, the 1-methyl-ethyl is also known as isopropyl. The 1-methylpropyl is known as secbutyl. 2-methylpropyl is isobutyl. 1,1-dimethylethyl is known as tertbutyl. Rule 14. Consider this situation. Both the blue and yellow direction give the same number of carbons but different substituents. When such a case arises, the correct longest chain is the one having the most number of substituents regardless of their locants. The blue direction gives a 10 carbon longest chain with only one substituent on carbon number 5. The yellow direction gives a 10 carbon longest chain but with three substituents on carbons 3, 4, and 5. Therefore, the yellow direction is the proper direction because it contains the biggest number of substituents and the same number of carbons. Therefore, the correct name is 5-butyl, 3,4-dimethyl decane and not 5,1,2-dimethyl butyl decane.